Welcome to uh, USA Kilt, Kilt and Culture, and today we're going to start uh, having some chats about bagpiping. So I got Lucas Mitch here in the house, and uh, he's going to give us some answers to some of the basic questions about piping. I don't know anything about bagpiping at all. That's except, okay. Except for what I've learned from you know hanging out with you, you know since since I've been working here. There's so. there's not that much to know. Don't okay. don't stress out about okay, it. Okay, so, so <laughs> just, just chill. And, yep. Okay, so um, that's is that a, is there any kinds of misconceptions that people have when they start getting into piping? Like, do people generally think it's going to be easy, or do they think it's going to be hard, or...? There's there's a couple misconceptions. One of them is, geez, if I want to play the bagpipes, I guess I need to know how to circular breathe, which is not true. It's, it's actually the bagpipe doing the work, since there's the bag there. You do not have to circular breathe. There's plenty of bagpipers that can, but that is not essential to actually playing the bagpipes. That's a big one. <laughs> is that something that separates, like, professional pipers from... Amateurs. No, really, that's just that's just an ability. You'll see it more so with the practice chanter than on the actual pipes. If somebody's circular breathing and they're not stopping to uh, to take a breath, they're just going onward, keeping the air going through uh, with their mouth, uh, and then inhaling as they're putting out air with their mouth through okay. their nose. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me get let me ask you some basic questions. Yeah, just sure. To get things started. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get interested in piping? Sure. So I got really interested in piping through my interest in history. Okay. So I was really interested uh, in middle school in different cultures and different countries, learning all about them, what makes them different. And it's always been fascinating to me to look on one side of the globe, see what people are doing in one culture, comparing it to another side of the globe. Why are they doing it differently? Why are they doing things the same way? That okay. sort of thing still fascinates okay. me. So long story short, got really interested in Scotland, got to go there for a week on a family vacation, which was a lot of fun. Nice. And uh, while I was there, saw a couple pipers. When I came back, uh, I was really interested in learning the bagpipes because that was one of those really visceral experiences while I was there. I can't walk into a castle, you know, every day, but if I could play the bagpipes every day, that would be pretty cool. Okay. So okay. Uh, we found a local pipe band, and I started getting lessons from them. And I think they all thought I was just a weirdo when I showed up because I would clap after every set that they played. <laughs> um, and they were kind enough to let me hang in there for a while to pick up all the basics. So some pipe bands do that, where they'll just okay. say, hey, if you're willing to come out and, and play and learn and put the time into it and become a member of the band, they'll teach you for free. Other bands do that a little differently, where they'll say, okay, you're going to play you know, uh, a couple of bucks here every month just so that they know you're interested, you're going to keep coming out and learning to be a member of the band. So I was fortunate. I really didn't have to pay anything. I just had to show up, which was great. So I did that, um, started playing the the pipes after the practice chanter. The practice chanter is the preliminary instrument, which okay. we'll talk about in a little yep. bit too. Yep. And got out onto the streets, started playing parades, started playing different events with the band, started doing individual gigs and performances myself, and just had a blast. It's a lot of fun. The piping community is really cool. There's so many really unique people around the world that you know they wouldn't have run into each other in any other way except through a mutual mm. love of bagpipes, which mm. always fascinates mm. me too. Mm. So yeah, that's that's kind of my story getting started in a nutshell okay. and uh, it's it's really a lot of fun once you're up and running on the bagpipes and playing your tunes and going out with the band unfortunately there is a period of practice time where you really have to get the basics down in your skills before you want to go showcase yourself anywhere out in public okay okay so then break it down for me mm -hmm. if I've never done this before I didn't. Yeah. Let's say I went to Scotland as a kid and got inspired to play. Sure. Kind of like you did. Sure. But I don't have a local band. Mm hmm. Or maybe maybe there's a local band I might be able to get free lessons from. But yeah. What what is the best way for me to get started? So one of the best things you can do to get started, um, we'll talk about the practice channel here in a second, is obviously practice, practice, practice. And not only is that practicing daily, um, hourly on your chanter, you may find yourself um, filling other hours where you're not practicing with listening to piping music. And there's a lot okay. of really good resources out there online now. Uh, there's instructors who teach on online. There's a whole lot of great stuff on YouTube itself. You can just hop on there and search World Pipe Band Championships and come up okay. with all great music from bands around the world competing. You can also listen to solo competitions up online. That's a great thing to do too. Of course, you've got Amazon and iTunes. And you know what? If you have a local band or just somebody that you can reach out to, you can email me if you want. I'll send you some links of some great solo sure. competitors, uh, some great pipe bands that
that you can listen to based on what you're interested in doing, whether it's band playing, solo playing. You want to open yourself up to everything in the beginning, though. Okay. Um, take a little bit of uh, all of that in so you can get yourself started and see, okay, what is the piping world? What does it look like? How can I participate in that in a way that I'm really going to enjoy it and grow as a musician? So that kind of sounds like that would help circumvent. I was concerned, like, if you're starting, mm -hmm. when you're starting anything new, basically, one mm -hmm. of the concerns is, like, am I going to pick up bad habits? But you're, you're basically saying that mm -hmm. if you're listening to good quality music mm -hmm. as part of your... Um, training your brain right, right. as you're getting started, that's going to help that, I guess. Yeah, and in, and informal... Because we've heard some really horrible... We've heard some really horrible bagpipes yeah, over the years. Yeah, yeah. So. Unfortunately, um, there's folks who are really excited to get started, and okay. they want to speed ahead and start playing the bagpipes right away. And what you want to be able to do is establish yourself as a good ambassador for the instrument. That's the term that I like to use for it. I'm, I'm forgetting where I heard that term, um, but it's, it's something that I come back to in my mind all the time. Because if somebody is brand new to piping, one of the things that's important to understand is, okay, you're, you're playing an instrument that not a lot of people know a lot about of. So right. you don't right. want to project a bad stereotype by not being able to tune your bagpipes really well mm -hmm. and have mm -hmm. people get uh, turned off to the instrument entirely just because you know they, they heard you struggling tuning or something like that. Right. So obviously nobody's perfect, but you want to be able to present yourself well and you want to be able to present the instrument well mm -hmm. at the same time. So yeah, that's um, a friend of mine just started playing the pipes okay. and he was making the comment that um, his instructor has told him that he is not supposed to even talk much about the fact that he's taking lessons for okay. like several months. Yeah. He that, said like he has like a break in period. Yeah. And is that is that part of the whole being a, is that just to make sure you're not that's doing a, something bad that's, in public? That's or? a really good idea. I I don't know of um I don't know of a lot of instructors that do that, but that is actually good okay. advice because once you tell somebody, hey, I'm learning to play the bagpipes, well, they're immediately expecting you to show up with your kilt and your bagpipes and play at their birthday party right. or play for this right. or play for that. So right. you want to be ready. And especially with um, with students that are younger, a lot of the times, and this is in music, this is in sports, whatever, their parents are so excited to show off their child. You know, oh. here's my child. They're they're great. They're And they probably are great. <laughs> but um, the, the problem is you don't want to put them in a bad like performance context if are, they're not ready for it. Are you saying they're bagpipe parents the way they're like stage parents? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is there is there any age that's too young to start playing? That's a good question. Um, when you're starting out with a youngster, really, you want to take a look at the the, the child's chanter first. Okay. Um, even if they're seven or eight, they're still probably going to be able to play that. Um, they're going to have to develop, you know, the 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 posture to be able to play that okay. comfortably. So it's okay. not something that they can pick it up and play right away, like, you know, a toy recorder or yeah, something like, like that. Exactly, right. yeah. Okay. So they're going to have to work on that. So that's something that when you ask some of these guys in Scotland, you know, I've talked to people in the in the past, like, oh, you know, my kid just was you know was born, and I'm going to throw a, a, a polypenko practice channer in the crib with him just to hold it for a little while, <laughs> just so he, he gets used to it. So, right. yeah, there's, there's never really any age that's too young to, to start introducing traditional music, um, taking the kids out to Highland Games, to competitions, because yeah. there's always live, a lot. Live experience. Yeah, there's right. always a lot okay. of fun things to do. And that's what did it for me, was being there in person and hearing it and just being able to participate as, a, as an audience member for a little while. And okay. when I was in Scotland, this bagpiper was playing on the street. It was right by the Sol, uh, Sir Walter Scott monument. Nice. And my nice. parents were like, oh, go over, get your picture taken with him. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, no, I, I don't want to bother him. You know, he'll think I'm uncool if I'm, you know, getting my <laughs> picture taken with him. But uh, it did. Did turn out uh, a really dorky picture on my part, <laughs> but it's it's got a cool cool memory associated with that. So mm -hmm. I would assume that the younger you start, the more of a risk there is that you might develop some bad habits that your instructor would have to be keeping an eye out for. But what are the most common mm -hmm. mistakes mm -hmm. when you're not, or when you're just starting? When you're just starting, where are the right? Well, what I would say is if you're if you're starting young and you're having good instruction, uh, that's something that the instructor is going to be looking out for you for. So if you're having formal instruction of some type, whether it's going to a really good band, an individual player, an online tutor, mm -hmm. you're going to be getting that heads up. Oh, hey, keep your fingers flat, keep them keep them straight, keep them relaxed, don't keep them curled. You know, little little things is like that. A that. common mistake? That's a big mistake. Okay. Yeah, a lot of folks. Yeah. 
grab the channer and they're thinking of recorder class back in the day, you know, their, their fingers, they're playing with the fingertips. Um, when you're playing the practice channer, you'll see on the, on the top hand, you're playing more with the, the pads right here, but your fingers okay. are flat. And then in the bottom hand, you're playing with closer to the middle pad of your finger there, not okay. the fingertips. Okay. Um, so that's, that's one big mistake. Rushing is another big mistake too. We folks just wh any kind of music really, whether it's yeah. piping, whether it's sure. anything else. I want to play this tune. I want to play this song, whatever. And they they get so excited and they just start rushing through everything. You have to take your time. You have to make sure that you're set up, that you're uh, approaching a tune, approaching a piece of music rhythmically, um, or, or not rhythmically, but speed wise, that you're comfortable with it. You know, okay. you don't. You want to control the instrument. You do not want the instrument to control I you. Can, I can almost see that being more of a problem with bagpipes than with other instruments because there's so many songs that we are so used to hearing mm -hmm. in a bagpipe band repertoire mm -hmm. that you know you think and, and some bands I guess will only have like a few songs that they play on a regular basis so you'll hear Amazing Grace a million times and you think well I could do that yeah you start to teach yeah yourself Amazing that's, Grace. that's like, a good point I mean it depends it depends on the band because mm -hmm. you have some bands that are street bands and okay. they go out and they play parades they do some performances, that's about it, they're happy doing that. Then you have, on the opposite side, competition bands who, they're out there competing, they're trying to field a lot of really, really good players, they're putting together complex sets with harmonies, that sort of thing, that's a different end of it. And that's something that you see um, is a more active participation because you've mm -hmm. got to practice a lot to be at that level. You have to make the commitment to get to these games, to compete, to learn new music. Okay. Um, so that's that's another way, and, and my band's kind of in the middle because we, we definitely compete but mm -hmm. we do parades we do performances those sorts of things so it's a nice it's a nice mix and there's bands like that out there as that was, well that was gonna be my next question was is there mm -hmm. are there is it good to try and find a band that kind of splits the difference or I mean I don't I don't want to say that one type of band is better than the other because yeah they all, they're just specialists yeah, in different ways, yeah they're different but, yeah mm -hmm. but you're gonna learn do you learn different Techniques between a competition band. Or if a... you if you work uh, if you work really hard uh, in in a competition band, mm -hmm. you know you're throwing the bar for your personal ability really really high, okay. and that's and that's not something that goes away really easily. Um, mm -hmm. If you start out in a band that's playing you know the same the same repertoire over and over and over, uh, you may be happy doing that. But should you want to go to a different band or just advance your personal skill in the okay. future, it's probably going to be a little bit harder just because you're not used to doing that. Okay. Yeah. So, is it better to go with a personal instructor if you have the opportunity? Always, yeah. If you okay. can find a personal instructor, that's really good. And people have different learning styles too. So okay. there's some people that they really flourish just in a one-on-one -on -one, um, with the individual attention. I, I know I did. Um, there's other folks out there that it really benefits them to have a buddy, somebody next to them, learning sure. because sure. they can realize, oh man, I'm not, you know, I'm not the only one that's unskilled here. I'm not okay. in this boat by myself. So okay. some bands will do like a group lesson too, or you okay. could go to a go to a band work. Shop. Um, that's the other thing is if somebody's really serious about learning, especially piping, mm -hmm. to really immerse yourself going to a workshop, going to anything that goes on here in the States, uh, USPA, the Eastern United States Bagpipe Band Association, okay. has workshops, they have information on competitions and Highland games, that's a great place to check out. Uh, there's a lot of piping schools. The one that I went to uh, is down in Winchester, Virginia, so the staff from the National Piping Center comes over teaches uh, everybody there for a week and wow. man what you learn in a week there mm -hmm. is is really really massive compared to what you're so learning it's, it's by yourself huh? yeah okay. exactly okay. so you just want to go into that week like a sponge and just absorb <laughs> all the information that you can okay. yeah absolutely that, really, that gets to what you were saying earlier though that bagpiping really is a whole community yeah of itself absolutely I mean, yeah um, are there any pitfalls to getting into that community or is there is it easy to just kind of break in and I'm thinking more like young adults yeah, um, and sure. stuff now, not so much the little kids who are obviously going to sure. have more of a controlled environment but like right. if you're like a college kid mm -hmm. or an adult um, this, I mean yeah. are there things you have to watch out I mean, how could I tell a bad instructor or a bad scene 
if I've never been in it right. before. Right, yeah, that's something that's difficult. Um, here's what I'll say is that for the most part, when you're getting into this and you're brand new and you're fresh, mm -hmm. um, it's something that most of the time, 99% of the time, that band is going to be psyched that you want to learn okay. how to play an instrument and participate. So oh, okay. most of the time, as long as you're willing to put out the effort, mm -hmm. um, that's what's going to make a difference. And if you find yourself trying to put out more effort than the band actively takes to improve themselves, uh, okay. you may find yourself thinking, okay. well, I may want to go to a different band and try something different, okay. or I may want to try some other type of instruction. So, so you just kind of keep your eyes open and get a sense for what the culture yeah. of the band mm -hmm. is like. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when it okay. comes and when it comes to bands as well, uh, like I said before, it's really cool because there's so many people that would have never crossed paths otherwise, right. except for bagpipes. So that transcends a lot of it too. That oh, you know, I didn't know you were a pharmaceutical patent attorney. Cool, you know, <laughs> <laughs> interested in <laughs> interested right. in bagpipes. Right. So you never know who you'll who you'll run into and who's got the sh uh, the same interest as you in uh, in pipes and and cool. the uh, the music. Yeah. You mentioned. Um, that you can use an online tutor, you can find lessons mm -hmm. online. Is that really, mm -hmm. is that a good idea, or is that... Yeah, it's... Is, is it's, that for somebody who lives out in the boonies and they don't have any other choice, or is that yeah. a good thing to do to augment regular lessons, or... Yeah, if you're if you're stuck out in the middle of Montana with, you know, you're a cow, you're, you raise cows and that's all you do, there's not, there's not a pipe band on the street, so that's kind right. of your only alternative. Um, it's it's really cool uh, to be able to schedule lessons with uh, some of these really great players. They do have options for you to schedule, you know, a Skype lesson with them. So okay. I would say if you are learning, you know, and and you can't get to a live instructor, that's your that's your that's your next best thing. Um, but there's always room to grab additional, you know, information and instruction from folks online too. I would say, you know, you want to be on your A game if you're if you're planning on paying for a lesson with uh, an online instructor instructor, somebody who's out there, you want to make sure that you are bringing them your all. You know, this is what I'm okay. working on. Okay. Um, and, uh, and and really get the most out of your time by figuring out what you can do to improve yourself the most and communicating sure. that with them clearly, because that's really important. So that's, a, that's an option for serious students then. That's yeah, the, okay. exactly. If yeah. you're just getting started, if you can find the local band, great. Um, if you can't, then go ahead, do the do the online stuff. Um, if you're just going to fully immerse yourself, which I would definitely recommend, do both. You know, <laughs> just get as much instruction as you're you can. You're a little bit biased. Yeah, kind of, I am. Yeah, I guess I like bagpipes, <laughs> you know. So so if you if you can get out there and just pick out a, a, as much information as you can, and mm -hmm. that's how I've approached a lot of things that I'm interested in. Okay, how, how much, you know, information can I get Quickly, and right. in our in our modern era, with with the logging on to uh, you know online, you can get whatever you want pretty quickly as far as information cool. and sheet music is is concerned. Music. So, so there's never yeah. really there's never been a better time to get into piping. Yeah, that's yeah, and okay. yeah, that's the case that for cliche, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, you can get a lot of information very quickly. You can get sheet music very quickly, okay. um, and and just being able to go onto YouTube and to listen to some of the best players in the world in one second is is really amazing. Nice. So okay, so let me put on my parent hat here. Uh oh. Um, let's say that my son wants to get into mm -hmm. bagpiping. Sure. He doesn't yet. Mm -hmm. He's still on the saxophone. Just okay. For anybody who's wondering. Okay. But, um, <laughs> um, but how much money do I need to be prepared to spend? Am I spending? Do I get a, a pair right. of cheap bagpipes for him, or do mm -hmm. I? Or, do, or or what do I do? Yeah, what do I spend yeah. So for the instrument, the you know? here's here's the <laughs> there's good news and bad news. <laughs> the, okay. the good news is um, buying a practice channer uh, okay. is is really going to be around $100, typically under $100. Um, that is your preliminary instrument to actually... That's not a bagpipe. Correct, yeah. This is what okay. you this is what you start on before you get the it actual bagpipes. Nothing, it only looks vaguely like a bagpipe. Song, exactly, so, yeah. I mean, so, so basically, when you're looking at this guy, there's a reed that sits in here. Okay. And... This reed, of course, is very delicate. So, okay. if your uh, if your child <laughs> is keen on breaking reeds, then it's going to be a lot more expensive. <laughs> but as long as you're careful putting the top portion of the channer on, just making sure that it slides right over like that, you're not doing any damage. This okay. is what you're learning on before you play the actual bagpipes. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so a lot quieter than an actual could, Highland that bagpipe. That I could deal with. Exactly. That I could deal yeah. with. Okay. And the bad news <laughs> is that when they're ready to get the set of bagpipes, that's when the expense comes. You're okay. you're looking at usually paying uh, over a thousand dollars for a quality instrument. Okay. So this. I've seen, but I've seen them online for like 150 to 500. And right. Then, and unfortunately, what? those are more novelty pieces than they are actual musical instruments. Ah. Yeah. So if you okay. see a set of bagpipes on eBay, on Amazon. And this is another really good thing to mention. Um, it's not going to work out. <laughs> they're uh -huh. they're uh, they're really just meant to hang above the bar or uh, hang above the fireplace at your house. Or if you're trying to play them, you can just chuck them in the fireplace because you're going to save yourself <laughs> more more time. That, that so, bad. Yeah, that yeah, bad. yeah. Okay. And okay. and you know, there's some folks that do try to make them work, um, mm. but you've got to put so much time and effort into it. It just becomes a totally different project. You know, are you trying to learn how to play the bagpipes? Are you trying to to take an instrument that was not really made well and make it work. So okay. um, my, I, I always think back to, I remember seeing a posting on eBay like years ago, and it was some guy who had bought you know a set of those bagpipes okay. for around 200 bucks and had sp uh, spent 100 bucks on drone reeds, another couple hundred bucks on the bag, huh. chanter, he just like changed everything out of it. So there was nothing and left And still, of the yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was like, oh, I've you know, sunk so much money into this. And it's like, well, if you if you were serious about doing that, you could have taken all that money and, and thrown it at a, a brand a new set, set of bagpipes pipes. Okay. and save yourself okay. all the time and hassle. So, okay. so yeah, I want to um, I want to get back to the to the, the chanter then. Yeah, but um, what about just to follow up on what we're talking about right this second? Mm -hmm. What about used pipes? Sure. So used pipes are, are one of those things where if you have access to a band or if you have an access to uh, a tutor online, you may be able to seek out a set that maybe needs a home. Adopt a bagpipe um, from somebody who's not okay. using it. So uh, pipers tend to, tend to collect sets of pipes. It's very addicting. Um, okay. So when you're looking at all these different sets out there, you may be able to make contact with somebody who's getting rid of a set. You don't even have to worry about buying it online. Mm -hmm. However, if you're buying a used set, uh, you really want to make sure that it's in playable condition and good condition. Because I, I knew a guy mm -hmm. okay. uh, who, who got a used set of bagpipes. He, he had been working really, really hard, got a used set of bagpipes. This is years ago. And he tried playing them and was super disappointed and didn't realize that when he bought them the the bag was like leaking air all over the place oh, okay. so he he got really frustrated and like stopped playing for a while because he's like oh I'll never be able to do oh, this so he, he thought it was him exactly it was actually the pipes that were yeah yeah so and, and that, so bad pipes could ruin your ability to learn they could yeah and that's unfortunate that's least. unfortunate okay. yeah so huh. and okay. and he thank goodness somebody um, was just chatting with him online and was like well hey have you checked for air tightness have you done this yet? Mm -hmm. um, and then he finally realized, oh, there's there's a lot of things here that need to be addressed. But he was so okay. excited about having these bagpipes that he yeah. wasn't he wasn't thinking about it at the time. So, so if you're gonna get used pipes, then you should do it with the help of uh, an instructor or some band buddies absolutely. or something. So yeah. you have a second pair of eyes on it. Make sure you yeah, don't get you, snookered. You need to be on okay. stable ground when you're when you're doing that. And and you may see a set of pipes that come up wherever, and the price seems too good to be true. And it probably it is. probably is too good to be <laughs> okay. true. There's okay. you know you'll see not sounds like kilts. Yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very strong parallel there. Okay. Um, but you'll see unfortunately pipes that come up online for sale and they'll be used and they'll be hallmarked or you know somebody will stamp a name or just put in the description yeah these are these are uh, Henderson pipes or these are Wallace pipes and they're uh -huh. not you know there's something else that's okay. pretty uncommon okay. but um, you can't go wrong with buying a new instrument something that can be configured to you um, okay. that's that's a great way to go and okay. that's something that people will help you out with along the way too you know if you're in a bagpipe band you may want to see okay what style of bag is everyone playing? Is it a fully synthetic bag? Is it a hybrid bag? What size is the bag? Mm -hmm. um, what type of blow stick do they have? That all changes um, the, the tonal quality of the uh, the, the bag will change the tonal quality. Some of those, okay. some of those other things like the blow stick. Um, we have the adjustable ones, which are great uh, mm -hmm. for anybody getting started. Something like a fixed blow stick length. Uh, that's another thing that comes into it is posture, because if you have a, a, a pipe, maybe you got used, and the blow stick is this long, and I'm five two. 
I'm going to be playing all the way down here because this blow okay. stick is so long. That is not good for posture and you're just going to hurt yourself. So that's something that you want to take a look at too. Don't, don't expect to buy a used set of pipes and not have to go out and get a couple other things to really fit them for you. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So that gets me back to the chanter then. Um, yeah. This looks huge so mm -hmm. for, for a kid. It seems, sure. it seems like really so, long. Yeah, I mean, so this is a long this is a long chanter. Um, so okay. for an adult, this is going to work. Not for a okay. kid. So there are scaled down sizes. Um, there are there's a child size uh, specifically what we carry um, with RG Hardy. There's a child size. There's a standard size, which is right in the middle, uh, and then the long size. So okay. if you are Playing for a while, some people will start on a standard practice channer, and as they get more comfortable with that and progress to the pipes later on, uh, they'll pick up a long practice channer just because it's a little bit more comfortable. Okay. Because when you're playing the pipes, you've got the you've got the chanter a bit further down. So you're so, holding it lower than you're going to be holding the practice channer because you got to have the this to your lips. Yeah. Okay. So so it's not something that. Um, it's going to like fully imitate the pipe chanter, gotcha. but it's going to be a okay. little bit closer than having a shorter chanter okay. like that. So okay. yeah, just a just a little upside to those guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long should I expect to be on the chanter mm -hmm. before I get to using a full set? Of sure, pipes? that can be different for everybody um, because when you're getting into piping, not only are you learning how to <laughs> properly you know keep tone on the practice chanter mm -hmm. and learn all of your embellishments and learn all of your tunes. Um, um, you're going to have to figure out, okay, what point am I really, really comfortable, and your instructor will help you do this, what point am I really, really comfortable with all the basics, I'm ready to step onto the pipes and start and start moving. So that's something that it's different for everybody. Um, I've had some... I've had some guys who are like musical quasars that just come in and like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna, you know, do all my embellishments this week. I'm like, all right, we'll slow down. Okay. <laughs> no, you're excited, but let's let's do this one step at a time. So they'll come in. Maybe we'll cover one or two different embellishments every week, every two weeks, um, that sort of thing. And then by the end of a couple months, they're they're looking pretty good. They're playing a few tunes. They're okay. definitely into it. Okay. okay. Maybe we'll we'll grab bagpipes. Maybe it's gonna take longer. If they're learning a whole bunch of tunes, if they don't have any prior musical experience, they're learning to read music, okay. they're learning to take a look at how the embellishments are incorporated into tunes and play that comfortably, uh, that's something that can take a little bit longer. And there's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just it's a different speed for everybody. So okay. I've seen I've seen folks get get going on pipes in, you know, like a couple months to six okay. months. Not a couple months. Around six months. That's more that's okay. more realistic. Okay. Okay. Um, for Progress rapidly in a couple months, and then okay. you know, six month mark, one year mark, they're ready to get up on pipes. And for for other folks, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be more of a challenge to play everything really comfortably. And and you you can't do any harm in showing them the instrument, you know, as an instructor and saying, okay, well, I'm gonna have you listen to me tune my drones. I'm gonna show you each different piece, how this all goes together, how to maintain it, mm -hmm. uh, as a as a jump start for when they're ready to start moving along. And that's that that is always a tough period because everybody wants to learn, you know, everyone wants to get up on the pipes and play right sure. away. So it'll sure. be a different amount of time for everybody. Okay. Um, that's something that you, you have to figure out with your instructor and you you know you're gonna stick with it before you make the investment. Into into getting a set of bagpipes as well. Okay, so so it's not like it's not like you're guaranteed to have your black belt in six months. Correct, okay. correct. Okay. Yeah, not the case. <laughs> okay. Cool. So let me let me ask you a couple questions just about you mm -hmm. and your experience. Sure. Um, how old were you again when you started? I was twelve when I started. That's that seems pretty young to me to get into this kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Again, again, I I, I know. know plenty of folks who are younger than me that got started and okay. they're they're amazing players. So okay. <laughs> it's never too young. What was your first performance like then? Do mm -hmm. you, you remember when you first my, played in public? I remember my very first performance. Um, my first, I'll say it was my first paid gig that I went out and okay. I did. And it was playing for a wedding as people were coming in from the parking lot to go into the reception. Okay. So it was really easy. Um, and it was it was funny because uh, at the time, my, my music teacher... Um, he actually gave me the gig, one of my music teachers at the time, and he came into class and and he was like, oh, Lucas, can you hang out for, for a second after class? I was like, oh, no, what did I do? <laughs> and uh, and he's like, hey, do you want to take this gig? I was like, yeah, absolutely. You know, here we go. <laughs> okay. So I got to play, and it was very low pressure because you just hang out, you play as people are coming in, and once everybody's inside, 
you're done. Okay. <laughs> so okay. everybody was really nice. Um, and I think I was too excited to be nervous, so I was okay. I was just ready to go okay. and uh, and play. And I was really happy to see such like a positive response too. People okay. were like, "Oh, bagpipes! That's so cool." Um, and the other thing that gave me confidence was my kilt from USA Kilts at the time, because I knew I looked <laughs> awesome. So no matter we were not what, trying to do product placement with this, honestly. So we were not no to matter do that. what, I was I was all set. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I know you've known Rocky for a long time. I have. So yep. Rocky. Yep. Yep. That's cool. Um, so, what was the weirdest or maybe the hardest gig you've ever done? Ooh. Like, if you wanted to paint a nightmare scenario for a new piper, say, don't let this happen to you. Yeah, what, yeah. What would, what would that be? So, one of the one of the weirdest ones. Well, I'll say I'll say one of the coolest ones I played for okay. was a pirate-themed wedding in somebody's backyard. Okay. And that was amazing. Okay. Um, the food was great, and everybody was fantastic, and all. Garbed out, so it was sweet. Um, but the one of the more difficult ones, and I've had this happen a couple times, is when the person who hires you doesn't really understand how loud bagpipes are, and you're in mm. a situation. One being a, I was in, I was playing at a church for a funeral, and I had uh, I had a lady come over to me and say, "Hey, can you turn those down a little bit?" And I had to explain, uh, that's not really possible that's with bagpipes. You're okay. playing at one volume. So I said, well, you know, is it okay if I go over here to the other side of the church as people are coming in? Um, and she said, yeah, that's fine. So it worked itself out okay. A-OK. -okay. I played over there. It was, it was all good. Um, the other weird one uh, was I was playing for a fundraiser, and I was supposed to play outside as people were coming in for about an hour, um, and it didn't work out so well because it was pouring rain outside. So I started playing inside, and it was a weird ratio of people because a bunch of them liked me playing inside, a bunch of them didn't like me playing inside. Understood. Is so it because it was too loud. It again? was really loud. Yeah, okay. and okay. and the whole there was there was a lot of um, like it was it was just a like. A stone floor, so it was you know really, was really, really, fine, really, yeah. really loud. So uh, what I ended up doing was just kind of circulating through, and you know if you're if you're in that situation, it's a okay because you're going to circulate through. You're going to only annoy these people for a little while. These people are going to like <laughs> you, um, and it gives everybody right. a chance to get a picture, you know, with a piper because okay. that's always a cool thing right, right. Um, for folks to do too. So yeah, it worked itself out well. Um, but one of the one of the alternatives um, for the Highland pipes or small pipes, which We'll talk about probably in a future yeah, like to, episode yeah. as a as an option, and that's uh, something that works really well inside because they're a lot quieter. So they're going to be a bit more versatile for those situations where, well, I'm going to this event and I don't know what the environment's going to be like exactly. Okay. I'll bring the small pipes just in case. So okay. that's something to consider as well. And that's the nice thing about piping is once you do the the Highland pipes, um, I'd recommend starting with the Highland pipes okay. uh, and then coming back down to the small pipes because from the small pipes to Highland pipes is a lot more difficult than throwing the bar up here and then coming coming back down there. Hmm. Okay. Um, and that's that's effort wise as far as as far as actually powering the instrument. So I would assume, I would assume that Highland pipes are more common in this country anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. It's gonna be a lot easier to find a a, a full you know Highland pipes instructor or band than. Some way you can teach you small pipes. Or yeah, wrong? yeah. Well, it's there's there's a whole lot of crossover, and small okay. pipes are definitely really popular um, okay. these days. There's a lot of folks who who have been playing Highland pipes for so long, and they just want to do something a little bit different. Okay. Um, there's a lot of folks who just want to have more enjoyment out of their practicing, and maybe okay. they live in a row home and they can't play their their full set of bagpipes all the time. Right. But they right. can play their small pipes, and that's not going to bug anybody. Or um, somebody who's in like a session band, and they're going to play small pipes with other instruments so that's something okay. we'll, yeah we'll definitely address that later on okay. um, but yeah that's 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 something that when you're looking for instruction and for bands you're gonna find you, most of the time the the Highland band first the traditional pipe band that's out there and later on you may find oh some of these guys play small pipes or some of these folks go to sessions um, which is just a bunch of people meeting at a, at a pub or someone's house playing some tunes right. so that's Classic. another yeah. yeah that's another that's another uh, way that you can enjoy the instrument as well. Okay. Yeah. I think we I think we covered a lot of bases here, mm -hmm. uh, or a lot of ground for people who are just getting into this. And I definitely want to talk to you in the future about um, what it's like to be a professional piper. Sure. Uh, and things like that. But um, let me finish up just asking you one last question. If there was, and you may have touched on this before, but mm -hmm. if there was one piece of advice, one thing you know now, 
if you could go back in time and tell your your young self when you're just starting, one piece of crucial golden oh. advice oh. when you're just starting out, what would it be? That's a really good question. Yeah, um, well, I'm really I, this, yeah you, know. you know, I would say if if I was just starting out, me communing with 12 year old Lucas who's mm -hmm. just about to start learning how to play how to play the channel and play the pipes um, I think it would be more on the professional side of things okay and it would be once in a while it's not a very inspiring way to end but once in a <laughs> while it's okay to play on your terms so huh. it's it's something that you know it's very easy once you play the bagpipes um, uh, people will want you to play for this or for that, um, and it's part of being a good ambassador of the instrument. That's a more positive way to end it: is okay. be a good ambassador of the uh, ambassador of the instrument. Make sure that you are playing well. Make sure you're playing to the best of your ability, tuning to the best of your ability. Uh, that's really the, one of the most important things that that you're going to have to work on as a beginning piper, as a developing piper. And it's a lifelong journey. It's not mm -hmm. like just flipping mm -hmm. a switch. You're you're always working to improve yourself. So that's what I would mm -hmm. say: is make yourself a great Ambassador, ambassador of the instrument, no matter what you're doing. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Lucas. No problem. Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll talk to you again soon. All right. Take care.